Hi everyone, this is Mary, and this is a new YouTube channel, Better Than Before. Um, today, the project is chicken crates. And these make really, really good coffee tables. So just a little bit about what to look for. Um, make sure you look, when you're buying them, you can get them at auctions, flea markets, um, antique stores. Sometimes they're a little more expensive than an antique store. The poop is free but make sure all the, the uh, little spindles are good or can be fixed. So you just kind of take a look at it and you know, the door is, so that comes open. It's a great little display coffee table. Hi everybody, I'm Robin. I'm her camera, camera person. And sometimes I'll be asking questions. So Mary, what are you gonna make with this? I'm gonna make a coffee table. Okay, cool. And it's uh. So the bottom, so that you see that there's a little damage on the bottom of this. That's not as crucial because when I put the legs on, I'm either gonna run a board across here this way or that way to attach four legs. So if there's a little damage like this, that can be fixed relatively easy. So you don't have to worry too much. I mean, if it's really damaged, then use your best judgment how much work you actually wanna do, but otherwise that's good. So the first thing we do is power wash it. I have a couple questions, if it's okay. So do they all come like that? Can you turn it around for us, Mary? So I can see the other side with the hatch. Do they all come with doors like that? Yeah. Okay, so this is a chicken coop. Okay, I know that's a dumb so question, it, but. It goes up like that and slots in. They used to, when you'd see the trucks, now they use metal ones. Okay. But these things have been around, I mean, they're really sturdy considering how much. And that's Caboodle, that's the Caboodle. kitty. She's not a chicken. <clears throat> so if the spindle is broken, um, it, uh, say, say you find one that's in really good shape, but there's one spindle missing. Do you, you want to step back in the camera? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, this is our first, first video ever, you guys, together. Um, say that you find one and it's in really good shape everywhere else except it's missing one spindle. You, you is that a deal breaker? Not necessarily. It depends on how handy you want to get. Sometimes I've found them broken, like in half. I'm going to go split. up. Okay. And you can wire them together. See how this wire is on there? That's so the chickens don't peck them. I think, but uh, you can wire it together and glue it. I've done that where oh. the spindle was still there, but it was it was split kind of at an angle. Okay. And so I've taken some old rusty wire and put glue in it and then twisted it. So. Oh, cool. And, and then, then just you straighten just, it out. Like for this one, I will make sure these little wire tips are facing in and not pokey. If okay. That's, if that's yeah, hard. you just take a chain nose pliers. Yes. Or something and to bend me, it yeah, in. and and that'll I'll, I'll show you that in a, you know later. But right now okay. we're gonna wash it. Okay. Because nobody wants a chicken poop in their house. Oh uh, come on. <laughs> How come? <laughs> Cooper would like that. Yeah. That's Cooper, my dog. <clears throat> so any tips on buying a power washer? Um, and. Okay. And any tips on what to look for when doing smaller projects regarding a power washer? This power washer is one that I use for washing my siding. Okay. And um, it is relatively small compared to industrial power washers. I do not suggest those. They're very powerful and they'll rip right through that wood. Okay. So this so is this a 20, is 30 PSI? Oh, no, it's a 13? PSI. Okay. Um, let me see. Are these e easily found on Amazon? Yes. I okay. bought this off of Amazon. It's a Sun Joe power washer. There's all kinds. It's electric. You can get gas ones. Okay. If we find this exact one, you guys, we will link it on Amazon. Otherwise, I will find a 1300 PSI on Amazon for you guys if you're interested in light duty like this. Yes, and this is wonderful to have around the house just because if you have vinyl siding, you do not want to use. We have an industrial power washer and it can cut through leather boots. So you have to be very careful. Even if you're using this power washer, which is relatively low PSI, you want to wear glasses or um, safety glasses because when you're washing this stuff, it comes back at you. So, I mean, you're gonna get wet. Okay. And a lot of times I wear boots. I'm wearing Crocs right now. 
they're fine because I'm on a driveway. But so, you know, just just be careful. Okay. Use some common sense. And this comes with a bunch of different tips. The tip that I have on this one, which I, I think works the best for most things, is 25 um, degrees, I guess, is the spray spread. You can get, it comes with like a 40, it comes with a straight one. If you see people write their names, that's what they're using. The, the okay. smaller the <clears throat> degree, the stronger it will be. So let's turn this baby on. Wow. All right, so we won't be talking during this, you guys. I will probably um, film this, but speed it up for you guys. And so you're just basically just going to give it a good old bath, right? Yep. Okay, Cooper, get out of the way. getting if you compare them it's really really satisfying wow to do. that was so cool like yeah it is it is it's almost addictive to be <laughs> you're like next which, crate which next crate I recommend not a high psi one because you <laughs> will clean everything <laughs> well i remember i borrowed one from nick and i was gonna wash my brick and mortar and i pitted the cement yeah because i didn't know what i was doing one. this is why we need your channel mary so, all right yes. So you have another one that's already clean yes. right there. Okay, okay. you're going to so, show that to us. Um, I really, I clean the inside and the outside of these. These need to be, this is like a I'm gonna change hard cam. pine wood. So let it dry for two or three days. Oh, okay. Before you start. Before you start doing anything else. Okay. I'm getting a reflection here. So I'm going to try to get with the sun behind me, you guys. I think that just got worse. Yeah. So this is one all cleaned up. This is one that is all cleaned up. Wow. What a difference. And I've left it sit out in the sun for a couple of days. If you notice, there's paint. You know, a lot of these satin sheds. So there was paint drips, which I don't care about. Some people, you can um, try to scrape these off. But, you know, some of it's on the inside. What about so, sanding it off? You, you can said that. scrape, but... You could scrape it. Well, those are kind of thick. Okay. You can scrape it or sand it. Okay. Um, where did I These two that? get us... They start having a stare off. <laughs> at this point, what you do is take a look at it. When you wash it, it, make, it absorbs the moisture so the wood bulks up a little bit. Okay. So you might have some nails that pop out if they're not popped out already. So you go around and you tap in all the nails that are sticking out. Oh, I wouldn't have even thought to do that. <laughs> and okay. then if you can, you probably can't see it. But, and then I go over it with some 100 grit sandpaper. If you have 80 grit, that's fine. 320 is too fine. This is 100 grit. I would say 100... I'm so sorry. no it's 80 grit so oh. this works perfect so tell us about grits on sandpaper because if you're you're talking to people like me that they know what sandpaper is but they don't understand sandpaper really quick so grit is the um how fine the sandpaper is okay so an 80 grit is kind of medium so if you've got some rough wood an 80 grit is okay is a nice to start it's a it's considered a coarse sandpaper and it depends on the variety you buy. There's Let me feel it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the, so the higher the number, the, the lower the number, the coarse it is. You can get okay. 60 grit. I use that when I'm taking off, when it's a real rough piece of wood and I'm taking off varnish. And, you okay. Know, you kind of get a feel for it. And then, then you go to 100 and then 120 and then 320. 320 is super fine. So, so it's better... But it's better to not be aggressive with sandpaper. You can yeah. always sand it down more, but you can't bring that back up. Yeah. If you go too gritty, too fast. Right. 
And remember, too. This hey, that is, could have been a YouTube name, Too Gritty Too Fast. This is um, a primitive piece. Oh, I think, so, I think I'm funny. See how serious she is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doing a tutorial. I know. Um, so I apologize. Like a piece of paint that needs to come off. A lot of this paint came off when I power washed it. And I can go and, like, with the scraper, take some of this off. But now I'll show you, you can do, this is what it would look like with the stain. You know, when it's wet, that's mm -hmm. how dark it would get. You could do a darker stain. I'd usually do natural. Or what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to mix up some leftover paint that I have. And I'm going to do a wash on this particular one. So basically it's like staining with paint. Because this is so porous, it will take it really well. So let me go get that. Okay, so now we kind of went over it with the sandpaper. And what I'm gonna do for this one is I kind of let these pieces speak to me. Mainly it's what I have in my shop, so. <laughs> or what you have to use up. What I have to use up. That's usually how they speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I have is, as Robin knows, I get fascinated by color. That happens when you're beading, when you're sewing. This is, it's from Lowe's, it's a Valspar sample, a sample paint. But what I'm doing, and it is school boy blue. It's a satin finish. I don't know if that matters that much. So I put water in here. What I'm gonna do is mix this, cause it's getting old, so it needs to be and are you just eyeballing the water? I am just eyeballing the water. In fact, I'm going to go fill this up and shake it and put more water in there. Okay. Right back. I'll wait here. <laughs> All right. So I put a little more water in the, just to use up what's left in there. And never fear if it's not enough paint, it'll be light enough. I can go over it with another color, but I think this will be fine. I just want you think a, that's going to be enough paint for this whole crate well it, it, yeah, well it's a wash it's okay a wash. It's kind so of like a stain. okay so, so you can make paint washes with water and paint well i do um okay you probably, make that up i did not look it up i made it up <laughs> because i had paint i wanted to use <laughs> and <laughs> like you know people use chalk paint which i love i don't have a specific brand that I prefer. I do love it. There's a lot of YouTube videos on wash, uh, chalk paint. I kind of am one of these people that like to use up what I have. Robin knows that. Yep. It's kind of the way yep. I cook. Drives you crazy. Drives me crazy when you cook. Okay, so I kind of make it up as I go along. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I do that when I cook and it really bugs Robin. <laughs> but my husband eats it, so we don't care. Well, he's a human garbage can. This and I'm a princess. So. She is a princess. <laughs> She follows she, recipes exactly. Yeah, yep, that's my... Okay, and you want to <laughs> okay, pair sorry. these, especially if you have a manicure, which I do sometimes, sometimes I don't. Depends on the day. And these are chip brushes. And I, you can get these on Amazon. I will link it below. Otherwise, you can get it at your local hardware store or bill bee store. Um, just a trick. And I don't know where I learned this. Probably a YouTuber because I tend to watch YouTubes. These tend to, um, the little hairs tend to come out when you're painting. And for some reason, when you even them up, I don't know why, it helps with that. Don't, I don't, I, so I don't, is a chip brush just a cheap brush? Yes, it's okay, just a cheap okay. brush. People use them for stain. It, if you don't throw like, away brushes. They're throw away brushes. Okay. Sometimes I wash them out. Like this time I'll probably wash it out because... I'm only using it with water-based paint. Okay. We're, so, the flies are coming, Mary. I'm, and we're I'm, losing daylight. So I'm stirring. <laughs> I got this in a box at an auction. It's rusty, so it's probably not good for food anymore. Okay. But you never know. You might be able to use it. I have all kinds of use tools in my... I would have totally not figured to use that to stir paint. I would have just... Okay. Um, so what we're going to do... Okay, sorry. She doesn't want to know what I have to say. <laughs> See, we're just doing Ooh, this. Ooh, Mary, this, that's so this pretty. This will dry lighter. Um, 
so yeah what you do and and the reason why I do these washes because it's super easy to get you know these are so absorbent it's super easy to get in the cracks and I recommend old clothes because you're gonna want to do the bottom in here because you can see that and I love how you elevated it on the box and you don't need a drop cloth. I think you yeah. might have said that. And No, I don't think I said that. Oh, okay. But FYI, if you have a gravel driveway, the paint doesn't stick. Okay. Eventually it goes away. So, yeah, I would do it outside. And uh, this, I like this color of paint. I do too. So if you got, uh, if you have interruptions... For yeah. whatever reason, yeah. can you just put the lid on that ice cream bucket and put yep. the brush inside it? That, that's what. It, yes. You and honestly, you wouldn't even care if the paint this, got on the. Um, put it in a bag too. That's easier okay. than having the the handle all mucked up. Um, yeah, this is a pretty color. It's real popular right now, and I will. Um, we can't show link it to you when it's done. I order feet for it. I'll show you what feet I've ordered for it. They're on the way? Yeah. Um, and uh, and you're going to show us how to put the feet on? Yep. Okay. Yep. See, I panicked. I don't know how to do this. This is a very minimal um, DIY woodworking type project. I mean, if you can measure, if you have a saw, a circular saw, or even a hand saw you can you can do it it's super okay. easy and then we um you can or you don't have to some people do it both ways order a either plexiglass or glass top for it and that's not too heavy for that no okay it's super sturdy it's super super sturdy okay um, i wouldn't suggest standing on it okay and, oh and i so i can't like you know, find a boyfriend, have no. him throw throw me on it, and you know have his I way with me. Because that. <laughs> that's how well I know. <laughs> no sex on the coffee. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, no sex on the chicken coop coffee table. table. You forgot to add that. Um, also, too, see how it's soaking in yes yeah. let me put the camera up closer so we can see that it's so that's where you get that wash look then yeah. so you don't have to stain it or sand it to make it look distressed no because it's it just sucks it right in and wow to make it a little darker you can put more on we are losing light though but but um what i would say is you know um two and i'm sure people out there are familiar with if they're familiar with the chalk paint they're familiar with familiar familiar with sorry i can't say that word um the wax and that comes in all there's a blue wax that i do somebody gave me gifted me well let's not overcomplicate it right now let's just do this one I don't know kind if I'll do that i'll have to wait to see if this dries but you can really individualize it and I'm sweating. That's all right. You'll edit that out. You're right? beautiful. No, I'm not going to edit that out. We all sweat. <laughs> that yeah. is so cool. All right. So I think this segment is done. I think you guys the get the. Brush works best on this just because foam brush is. Oh, of... don't do the foam brush because. The foam brush sprays, it gets caught. And yeah. Through a couple of them. Yeah. So, All right, yeah. so I think we're done with this part of the video, you guys. She's going to finish this, and then I'm going to come back out to the farm and um, experience putting the legs on and everything else. So for you guys, it's only going to be a minute, even a second, and for us, it's going to be a little bit. So we'll be back with you in a second. Hey, everybody, I'm Robin. I'm the one that holds the camera for Mary. Um, so it's a couple of weeks later, and a couple of things we wanted to tell you is we're headed up to the workshop right now to finish these this project and this is her farm and this is the lane we drive up when we go to the shop and um that it that little dog is my dog cooper and it, you'll you're familiar with him uh if you've watched my channel talks from the heart so cooper ever since he's been a baby 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 he has run the lane and we follow him in the car and every once in a while he'll look back to to make sure I'm still coming. So, um, okay, so a couple things we wanted to tell you was uh, we showed 
the first part of the video that you just watched, um, we showed it to a couple of friends, got some feedback, and a couple of things that was said were that I talk too much, <laughs> and then also that my voice was really super loud, but Mary's was faint. There he is. He's like, are you coming, Mom? And I'm like, yep, I'm coming. So I stop the car, and then he keeps going. Um, okay, so uh, uh, my voice was very loud, and Mary's was very faint. So what we've done now is purchased a microphone to clip on her apron, and we hope that that helps. And so this is us heading up. And then at some point for Cooper safety, I do kind of go a little faster than him, keep my eye on him, and uh, then he eventually catches up with us. He likes to visit the cows and stuff before we go, to, before he comes into the shop and gets a drink of water. So Mary's house used to be up here, and then they moved it. So this is her old garage where her house used to be attached. And they don't dairy farm anymore, but they do have some, some cows. And so here we're pulling up to the shop and um, we'll start filming. So we hope that you enjoy this. Hi, it's about three weeks later and I've saved every step. We painted it the last time I was with you and now it is dry. And what I have here is when I was just kind of looking over it, um, some of the boards were a little loose, so I put some wood glue in the crack and I took another board and these are clamps and I clamped it down just to give it a little more strength. Not, I mean, you don't have to do this step. This one was just kind of particularly loose, so I did it. This is a a clamp, I prefer the kind that turned because you can get them a little tighter. There's a couple of different types. I have a lot of them because I inherited some of them from my father. These are clamps. And from Richard. And from Robin's husband, Richard. These are clamps where you do this. I usually have my husband help me with these because you have to have more hand strength once you tighten them up. That's just a little side note. If you're buying yourself tools, which I highly recommend, love tools. <laughs> what we're taking here and now. I have a quick question. So you put a piece of board to protect that the clamp will not hurt your yeah. project. Yeah. Okay. And I would recommend always doing that. I wasn't so worried about the bottom of the chicken coop, but the top, because this is a softer wood. And this is a piece of, I don't know what, probably a porch railing that I, I keep these fall off to do exactly that. <clears throat> so because we used a water base paint and then we thinned it with water like we'll have to go back through as we're sanding this and pound down some of the nails because they would have popped up because it would have absorbed that water and the wood would expand a little bit so the nail heads might be up a little bit that's okay because we're gonna so now the next step is sanding this is a sanding block you can get them at any hardware store and I usually cut a full size eight by eight piece of sandpaper into fours. And then you hook it in here. I mean, you can, everybody. If you don't want to spend money on a sanding block, you can just use it. Right? Yes. It makes it easier on your or if you have a piece of wood, obviously a smaller piece of wood, you can wrap it around and sand it with a piece of wood. I've done that before when I needed it a little smaller. I've, uh, wrapped it around a dowel when you're trying to get in. So what we're gonna do is we're, we wanna sand down all the, the wood that raised up. So it takes a little bit of the paint off. It gives it a little distressing. To save your manicure, these thin garden gloves work perfect, especially with sanding. My manicure looks pretty nice. <clears throat> so I don't wanna ruin it. Um, not that I always take care of my manicure, but this one looks pretty good. So, okay, move Cooper. So we're going to sand this. In here, you notice that this is a little bit lighter than this. We're going to sand it down and see what happens. I do have paint left, so if I want to make it a little darker, I can. But I probably don't. I kind of like the imperfection. I like the perfect imperfect. All 
All right, and then we, I do do the inside as well. Some people don't, because you know, you've got nail heads and you've got a lot of stuff in there. But I, I do sand it just to knock down some of the, um, the wood. So come this way, Robin. So we sand in the top, you can see where the nail heads. And that, if you feel it without gloves on, you'll feel that it just knocks down. We've got all these nail heads in here. So just remember that, you know, this is an, a primitive piece of furniture and you're not getting it perfect. I just sand it. Like I'm going to take a little... And this is the boring part, super boring, <laughs> but a good workout. We're using clear acrylic spray because it's easier to spray these versus wipe it on. We're gonna give it a good coat. I use water base. This is a Minwax. You probably have a, a favorite brand. That's just the one I use. And it's good to do it outside, you guys, for ventilation or good aeration, right, Mary? Yes. If you can. I mean, otherwise, make sure you wear a mask. A, uh, a good mask. So we give it a good coat. I've done a couple. Usually do one or two because you do light sprays. And you let it dry, it dries relatively fast. And then we're going to put the feet on. What I did with this is I bought these at Amazon and we can link it below. It has a little plate, put the five screws in, and then we screw it here. And I will show you how to do that. I had these two boards, they're just a one by four piece of pine that were already painted from another project. I put them along the base mainly because I didn't want the screws going in through here. And this wood is more of a pine that's kind of thrashy, so I didn't want to mess it up. And it gives it another inch of height. So all total, this will be about 19 inches. These were four and a half inches, and then we have another inch. And this, I think, was 15 something like that. We'll measure it when we're done. And that's about average height for a coffee table. You can go a little higher or a little lower, depending on what you want. I will go get the screws. All right, we're going to attach the feet. I got these from Amazon, as I said. comes with the foot. It comes with the plate. It comes with the screws. And it comes with a little uh, black foot tab, which you can use that, or if you have another kind you prefer. So this plate, make sure that the you put it on the right way. The crew, the, it's drilled so the screws countersink in the middle. So we're gonna attach it to the foot first. So it has five screws, and I pre-drilled the holes just so it wouldn't split the wood. And you can see here that it countersinks. <clears throat> it's got a little countersink already in the um, metal. It comes that way. So it's a really nice kit. Okay, so there it is finished. And she drilled in all those screws to stabilize the foot onto the feet. the brass or the plate. <clears throat> okay. So now I'm going to attach them to the bottom of the table. So we kind of center it. I'm have I've got it about a half an inch in from the edge. And I am pre-drilling. This is a smaller bit, but I'm pre-drilling so the screws don't split the wood. This is just a 
like I said, a one by four pine that I put on there just to give it some more structural strength. What you can do is you can mark them and then drill, take that off. This one we're going to have to use a... Uh... Okay, one thing that is happening is um, we just want to point out that the drill is butting up next to this curve here on the leg. So sometimes you do have to take your manual tools and use those to screw them in. So she's getting them started and then going to use that. So don't be afraid to always reach for your manual tools if you need them. Okay, so she's attached all four of these legs there. And now she's going to put the little, those are the no skid that protect your flooring, right, Mary? Yes. So they come with the kit of the they foot? They come with the kit. Okay. Neat. And they fit perfect. You can buy carpet ones too if you want something that slides a little more. These just came with the kit, and I like them because they're the perfect size. I want to put one on. Okay. You can do the last one. Yay! This is about as deep as I get, you guys. Okay, I'm trying to do it one-handed. Will you pull the paper off? Thank you. All right, so she is done with this piece, and we're going to load it into the car and bring it up to the house and stage it for you guys. Okay, everybody, this is also one we're gonna bring up to the house to stage. That's just what Mary stained. That's it's just- sta I stained it. Okay, and then it's beautiful. The you know, I might, I might have to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> polyurethane spray in an oil-based finish. Okay, and then, and I then she added four boards, she said to give it a consistent look. I don't And then these are different legs. These are also from Amazon. If you, if, can you film under there? And that's why I added four boards. Oh, cool. They come across this way and this way, so I wanted it. All right, cool. So we're going to take that up in the car to stage it up at the house. We're done with the uh, chicken coop coffee tables. I hope you learned a little something. Thanks for watching my first video and we'll hopefully be back soon with some more tips and tricks for upcycling.